Hello dear Ronins, welcome to Ronin Hood. Today it will be an episode about how to disassemble a Shinken. So this is the beginning of the adventure with the Zesei Custom. It was a green uh, custom that I made with their Koshirae. And this is um, made in China Tamahagane. I will make an episode about what could be Tamahagane made in China because Tamahagane should be made in Japan with a Japanese product and Japanese uh, art craft. So here is a first look of the Tsuka and I made a mistake in my order because I asked a red copper sepa, it was not what I wanted and then they sent me um, some gold plated sepa. Here you can see the uh, blade it's Shinogizukuri and it's a Kobuze uh, Tamhagane from China. First cleaning with a glove, it's um, Mekugi Ana with just one Mekugi. It was really cleanly made. I will make a review, of course, with the essay, so I won't talk about the craft here. It was a more expensive sword, 1,600 euros, all taxes and price included and I wanted to change the SEPA it was the first time it was a bit complicated because I realized that after I disassembled one time there are like a lack of space between SUBA and SEPA in smoothing so I had to reassemble it uh, before having the time to um, change all the necessary um, thing that you need to do when you have to change SEPA because you have to rebuild them and you have to do many little things. So here it's starting. So it's my second disassembling of the Shinken. The Shinken after the first reassemble and was having a little noise on the Tsuba, uh, of course moving because after every disassembling, reassembling, you have, if you do not respect many little things on the craft uh, you have little noise on the tuba because it's moving because there is some pace that has been created by you uh, moving taking off all the pieces and you reassemble it it's not as it is when it's going out from the manufacturer from china so here i'm using a piece of wood i'm using little hammer you have the little hammer and this FACOM hammer, more important. The thing is, you should proceed really gently, always with the less strength as possible. First, always after removing the Mikugi, you are just proceeding uh, like hitting on your wrist to uh, make moving the, the pieces. And if it's really clean, made in Japan, it will be uh, um, disassembled really fast and easily. Here it was asking a bit more uh, time with two hammers uh, and with nice touch, but it was really clean craft uh, with this type of product, with this type of cost. So it was really uh, appreciable for making this experience of disassembling. Every pieces are really nice. The quality of the Nakago is really clean. You can see it. Um, the Abaki, uh, the, the quality of the polishing is really high craft. And of course, the Amon is especially outstanding. I'm not crazy about this uh, Koshirae pieces, uh, Fushi Koshirae and Menuki, but I will talk about that in the review later even I think they are really pretty beautiful, even they are not made in Japan. The Ito and the Sageo are uh, with silk from Japan and uh, this is one of the great things that I found with um, Zesei. So here I'm using a pen for having the mark, the print of the red copper Tsuka that has been crafted by Zesei to the new gold plated uh, SEPA that I will use to make it on the same colors than this uh, beautiful Koshirae with black 
green and gold these are the three colors that i ch have chosen for this uh beautiful custom uh from they say so red copper was not on the plan i just forgotten this little detail so i'm using the pen and uh taking the print and then i will use a file to uh, remove uh the the middle from this golden plated uh, sepa and then it will be okay for having all the koshirae the pieces of the sword with the same tones uh, and color uh, for making something that is beautiful and harmonious so i'm using the file properly uh, i give this advice that i'm not a great craft uh, guy when it's necessary i take the time for it here it was absolutely necessary i didn't want to make the review uh, without having the three clean colors of uh, this custom that took me like so much time to think about which pieces i will put on it uh, which budget for this really interesting brand that is they say uh, i I've, i was attracted by they say because their beautiful uh, picture about the um, the blade without the koshire with the koshire this beautiful polishing this outstanding amon and mekugi ana with proposition of many koshire koshire is the pieces the f uh, the fittings of the sword so um, they were like really close from um, koshire from japan they use silk and uh, their saya work is outstanding the saya is like as beautiful as my saya of my Eito from japan so i was like really really uh, attracted by this uh, new brand we can say new brand because two years ago it was uh, as almost as new even a guy was um, uh, launching this business model of they say before and a new owner were buying it and make a new business model then but two three years ago uh, they say uh, was not as the, the new business model uh, as this last two years so now they are known a little bit more from one year and one year off on youtube uh, i will talk about it more precisely you can see there that i have finished to check that the red copper sepa and the gold plated sepa are feeling the same way to the abaki so it was just a bit some time with a pen and with a file and always my advice is when you have to make a craft like me you think you use your time when it's really necessary here it was necessary to present for the review and to have the um sold as i design it because i choose the tuba i choose uh, which type of steel kobuze uh, tamahagane attractive uh, proposal from uh, they say and the color the ito and the minuki so it was the time to do it properly after reassembling all the fittings i proceed with the same thing shaking from my wrist the blade and fittings until you have to use some armor work but always proceed following the parallel line from the blade to not uh, have a heating that will uh, bend the blade or bend the, the fittings so it's really important and always being careful with a really sharpened edge this blade was like absolutely extremely sharpened uh, one of the most sharpened blade that i have found on the market from china so um again one a great thing of as uh, they say uh that i will have to mention on the review but i starting here because i'm on the craft so things are coming just like this so always taking the time to uh clean if especially if it's uh metal powder the metal powder you have to clean it from my opinion with a tissue and water and of course with a hoover then i proceed for having some uh foot layer like 
layers of paper like footprint from the SEPA but it's a layer of paper or cardboard and to have just uh, more pressure between fittings. I know there is another technique where you can use a hammer and you proceed by heating four points on the tuba. I was not ready yet for practicing this way for uh, changing uh, and pressuring with a pick and a hammer on the tuba. Uh, I know this technique can be great because it will make the tuba more tight when it will slide on the nakago. But I wanted to do this way, so I propose on this episode my way with just layers, under layers with paper or cardboard uh, for SEPA, under SEPA, for having a proper fitting and no sounds on the tuba. I know many masters uh, with their yaito uh, like used to let some kind of little noise that means that with experience the tuba on their yaito is moving a little bit. I don't think it's so so dangerous even with a shinken if it's not moving too much it's just a little sound and if your mekugi are well uh, fitted and well assembled with the nakago and tsuka but I just don't like little sound because I can lose some um, con focusness so I want it to be and to practice properly with something that is clean 100% uh, because uh, practicing Batodo and Tamashigiri requires uh, absolutely 100% secure and safe uh, tools, martial tools so I took the time I made the layers for uh, the two sepa, I transform the two sepa for uh, it fit la as the red copper ones to uh, the nakago. So then I decided to clean the blade to have under the abaki uh, a layer of oil. It was not so interesting because after I have to touch the blade when I have to reassemble it. So it's not so smart. Um, I wanted to do two things in the same time. Not a great idea for the moment, uh, because yes, it protects the, the, the blade under the abaki as the traditional way to clean the blade. You remove all the fittings and you clean the blade. And the problem is I was not ready for reassembling without touching the blade. So I think with a blade, that is 100% Japanese where all the fittings are perfectly fitting together. You do need to touch the blade and using a hammer and a piece of wood. So here I had to touch so it was not so smart to clean the blade as the traditional way. So I put the layers of paper with the sepa in the proper order from abaki to sepa to tsuba to sepa then to tsuka. On the tsuka you will have first uh, Fushi, Ito Menuki on the Tsuka, and at the end on the bottom of the Tsuka you have the Kashira, and not Koshire. Koshire means the fittings uh, of uh, Shinken. I use a little bit the hammer using the piece of wood to not hit so much the Kashira, but it's really difficult. You see, I have to touch because if I hit, the blade is advancing. It's little details, but it requires experience and proceed with the less as strength as possible. Because if you do just a little mistake, using like two to three percent or five percent of your, your strength, you won't destroy any pieces of the tsuka with the vibration or with a wrong angle of heat. So here we are good. I'm not a great fan of disassembling assembling Shinken because I know that everything from China uh, do not require requires the same number of hours than a Shinken from Japan. It's uh, just normal. Uh, they, they need to, to they need to make money and if they spend like six months on a sword for five, 500 euros they, they can't eat so it's absolutely 
fair that it's not the same quality but this the why this is the reason why i don't like to disassemble reassemble because it, sometimes it's not fitting so well here because it's a higher price uh middle class sewed uh the um, the quality of the craft is pretty high and pretty very good so it was not so difficult to disassemble and reassemble Always it depends on the brand. Some brand makes some great work of uh, fittings. Like here it's a great work. Uh, all the fittings are really, really clean. You have brands like um, Murasame, it's okay, it's good. You have Huawei, uh, looks pretty good. Even I didn't disassemble it. I think Anway is pretty good on their fittings, even with a practical model. Like everything is really clean. Uh, and safe so um, some brand like the first so that i disassembled uh, musashi practical was a bit complex because it's too low price so it's mass industrial product and uh, it's difficult for a beginner to 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 make properly the craft so i think craft uh, disassembling and reassembling uh, requires experience and a uh, careful touch because you have the age, because you have hammers, you have mekugi, everything requires like safe touch and experience. So I think uh, we need time to evolve in our craft uh, to change some pieces. Today now I have a little bit more experience. I'm able to change a koshirez on a sword. I will make episode in the future about that. Uh, and I will propose you like Japanese uh, koshirai if you want to change your pieces on your shinken from China it can improve a lot the quality and uh, the weight and the balance we'll talk about that in future episode I changed one of my sword uh, with koshirai that I just bring back from Japan it is absolutely awesome so here I'm just removing the extra of paper I didn't have any problem with mekugi I use uh, this excellent thing that is like um, a pick just with diameter of the mekugi and i can push them out or push them in i always respect a mekugi has two parts one is larger and one is thinner you have to absolutely respect that the thinner part and the larger part when you remove the mekugi or you when you will take it back put it back so here i'm just uh, using a, a pen of calligraphy black pen from Japan for uh, hiding uh, the part of the paper and I'm just cleaning on the same time to not let some pen um, work on any fittings to make it super clean so I won't see any part of the layers of paper removing with scissors and uh, putting some black color and of course cleaning all the fittings, not letting some uh, pen draw on it. I'm just watching the results. There is no sound, everything is well clean. All the colors, tone are respected. It's really beautiful. Thank you for having watched this episode. I hope you like it. See you soon in the next one in Running Hood.